My name is Roy. Um, I am based out of Austin, Texas. I'm 22, and this is Financial Audit. All right, you're pretty young. We haven't had someone that young in a hot second. So what do you do for a living in Austin, Texas? I am a phlebotomist. I work at, on like a, a bus, usually collecting Sorry. blood donations. No, you're good. Oh, really? So you're just going around collecting the bloods? Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Okay, yeah. I would pass out Stab in a Stab people all day. And I would I be love fainting. It. <laughs> uh, okay, very cool. What are you What are you making? I actually, we have some of the, so this must be hourly because I have two pay stubs. Yeah, it is hourly. So I sent you one pay stub. So I get paid twice a month, um, but they give us, I think like three Ooh, or four overtime. times a year, I get um, a three week paycheck. So that's why one of those is like way bigger than the other. Yeah, I don't know. It, Oh, that was one of the random, the rare three week paychecks. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Okay, right. so, so the I other see you one make is twenty one thirty two an hour. Yes, and I did just recently get a promotion, so I got a little bit of a pay increase. To what? Uh, I brought it with me. All right, congratulations on. Thank you. That. Those b****s better promote me. Uh, okay, now I get paid twenty two eighty two an hour. Okay. And I'm going to be getting paid more because I'm going to do more things, but that's what Very it's going to be in like four days. Well, you have good overtime anyway, because it increases it by 12 bucks, mm -hmm. it looks like, so that's pretty nice. But of course, in this statement, we only had seven hours of overtime, but you did get 40 hours of regular pay, uh, two weeks... Okay, very good. And then your gross pay here was $1,950, $1,571 being net after withholdings and uh, contributions, 401k, all that good stuff. So is that more average than that big one then, right? Yeah, pretty much. I Let's only get the your, big one like three or four times a year. Okay, and with your pay raise, it's probably going to be more like 1750 hitting your account on a monthly basis, I'm thinking. Maybe so, yeah, I guess so. 1750 but oh, not on a monthly basis, on a bi-weekly basis. Yeah. So, of course, that would be... So we're looking you really at, think it's 1700 What do you think it's going to be higher or lower? Sounds like a lot to me. Well, you're at 1571 Well, okay, well, let's just do some quick math. What did you say your new rate's going to be? 2280 I think, is what it was. And you're getting pretty much a guaranteed 40 plus a little bit of overtime. Mm-hmm. Always. Uh, I think it'll be like 1650 Okay. But of course, with overtime, it could be higher. Yeah. It could be less. One, six, five, zero times that by two. So pretty much $3,330 hitting your account on a monthly basis is that net income. What's your percentage to 401k contribution? Um, it's 4%. Okay. And what's it matched to? Um, I think all of it. Pretty sure. Okay, because the employer, um, you actually, with what you contributed is less than what you're... Oh, it is? Oh, I'm not ...than what sure, you're getting. Man. So, like, it looks like they're matching almost more than 100%. Oh, really? Oh, oh. But it might be, like, certain percentages up to a certain amount. So, yeah. you know, I, I don't... But, essentially, you put in 58 bucks, they put in 78 bucks. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. And then that other paycheck was a little more. So, okay, cool. Well, after that raise, we're getting $3,300 net on a monthly basis. So let's figure out your financial situation. Like, okay. I want to know what we're getting into here, you know, and give the audience some background. What's up? What's going on? Um, well, right now, I guess in terms of what I pay for, like, I'm a renter. I do roommate with... Well, technically with my husband and my brother, but my husband is away right now because he just joined the Navy. I want to take a brief moment to thank today's sponsor, SoFi. So as we know, with so many people on the show, people are just burdened down by high interest private student loans. And because of that, they can't even think of their future. What does it even take to pay those off with the insane interest rates? Am I ever going to be able to get a new car? Am I ever going to be able to get a new house? What does my future look like? But the good news is there is a potential solution that can help people save thousands and thousands of dollars. And it's super easy to see if their rates are competitive with what you have today. And that is thanks to SoFi. SoFi is a mobile first personal finance company that helps you bank, borrow and invest all in one app. They understand the impact of student loans and what they have on your personal life and your future. 
They offer a range of financial products and services, including personal loans, mortgages, and investing opportunities. And if you're concerned about some uncertain things in your life, their unemployment protection is applicable to student loans in good standing, providing you with additional peace of mind. So refinancing your loans to a lower rate, as we've seen with many people on the show, can help you take control of your personal finances and lead you towards financial freedom. And you can do that today by going to SoFi.com forward slash Caleb. There you can explore your options and that link is also in the description below. Find out if the rates are competitive for you. Oh, jeez, um, okay. But he still pays a third of the rent, so that's cool. Um, so he got deployed for the first time? Well, he's still in school right now mm. and then he's going to be stationed at when he graduates in August. Mm-hmm. So, so you're going to do like the three-year stint or full yeah, career? Yeah, he's, he's going to be in... Well, he signed up for four years and that's it. I'm not mm. going to let that man do any more than that because... It's, I'm tired of being by myself, but, um, he's not going to go join. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing is, so he got orders to go to San Diego. And so, Oh no, the terrible, I don't want to go to horrible city of San Diego. Yeah. That nobody likes whatsoever. Yeah. So, but I, I think I'm just going to go with him anyways, just because I want to be able to see him and he's going to be on a, a ship. So that's, like my best opportunity to be able to see him as much as possible. Oh no, 75 degrees and sunny with no humidity all year. <laughs> but oh the no, gas beaches prices. and palm trees. <laughs> well, it's six dollars a-, a gallon over there. Yeah, but then you get to live in like perfect climate. So yeah, also, just don't drive. Yeah, you're right. I, you know what? I'll just live in a walkable area. Yeah, I'll just be homeless. You know, well, I, that I don't have to pay that, rent. And I can but, beg. Okay. Either way, so. Okay, continue. What's your financial situation? Oh, yes, right. Okay. So, um, I, I, we want to buy a house whenever he's done with the military is kind of like the goal right now. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to dig myself into a hole to do it, but with our plan right now, it's he gets out, we buy a house, and then we have kids. Um, and then I just need to pay off my car, and that's really it. I'm th- I don't really have any debt or anything. Other than the car. Right, yeah, other than the so car. So we have the car. You, you've you recently put a good amount of money towards it, which is great, but it's still at $12,180. Mm-hmm. By the way, give yourself a score, 0 out of 10. Where are you at currently, do you think? Like 10 being amazing? Mm-hmm, and 0 being? Maybe like a 6 or a 5, 5 or a 6. Like mm-hmm. middle of the road. Five and a half out of ten. Okay. Let's see how that stacks up at the end. Okay. So <laughs> car, $12,180.75. Very good. What's the interest rate on this? It is 5.6%, I think. Yeah, that's in that range with cars. Like, yeah. I mean, certainly not crazy, but with depreciation and everything, when it just comes down to basic math, we'll still want to pay it off kind of early. Mm-hmm. So. <sighs> And your minimum monthly payment is what? Um, it's like two hundred eighty dollars, I believe. Well, okay, actually, it might be more. I can't remember. Well, what's the term length on that thing? It was like the longest one. Is that sixty six months or something? Well, that's not the longest one, but or, still, but still, but it's still long. I like to follow the money guys rule. The money guys rule being that you're putting ten percent down. It's three years long, and it's no more than 8% of your total income before taxes. So pretty much like after taxes Um, and stuff like that. What I like to do, I kind of adjust it to more like 12% post-tax income, which doesn't mathematically necessarily work out. But in terms of net income, do we really want more than 12% going towards it? I don't think so. So we're definitely three years. But you're making, you know, why? so you've started making more payments to it. Why? Um, Well... Okay, so this is my first time like buying a car and like taking out a loan for it. So I I didn't exactly know like Wait, when did you do it? Um like I think in May. Oh wow, or very recent. Maybe a okay. little before that, yeah. Pretty recent. I just got it. Um but yeah, it was my first time doing that. So um I I guess I, I just tried to do it the best way that I could now. And I had like $8,000. So I was like, okay, like this is my down payment. And then they like never asked me for a down payment. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just pay it on the account. And like they gave me the option to put a down payment at the dealership, but I could only put 2000 down. I was like, I don't know why. Because they want to suck that interest yeah, out of you. So I said no. And I, I just put it in my. What's the car? It's a Corolla, a 2016. Year. 
Um, but it had like 74,000 miles on it. So yeah, it's too expensive for that car. I paid too much money for it for sure. Why? Why'd you do that? Um, because, well, I was trying to talk the guy down. I really probably should have said no, but, um, yeah, I was, I wasn't sure if I could find a better deal, but I was trying to talk the guy down and I, well, he, I heard that you shouldn't like tell them like exactly like how you're planning to pay for it until the very end. So they don't swindle you out of your money. And then I, he was like, okay, so like, you know, how are you going to pay for it? And I was like, well, you know, I was thinking about financing through the bank, unless you can offer me a better interest rate. And he was, he was like, okay, like, what'd you, well, what was the, you know, like interest rate that you got from your bank? And then he just, I just showed him like the um, paper that shows the approved loan amount. I um, mean, he was like, oh, okay, well, uh, you already have this. So I'm not going to not going to take any money off of what the car's worth. And I was like, and like all the oil changes were done on time on it. And I don't plan on buying another car unless I like really have to, like, I'd prefer to just keep this one like forever. So it's like, well, I won't be, but I get what you're saying. (laughs) Yes. Okay, cool. Now I see you have a credit card, but you pay it off every month. It looks like. Yes. Yeah. So you're a credit card person. That's lovely. That's rare, but, uh, you know, nothing. What's common interest. Common interest? Oh, that was a karaoke bar. Pretty you spent fun. 183 bucks there. It was my it was for my birthday. My birthday. husband Venmoed me for it, so I just put it on my card and then he paid me back. Yeah, and then some holy roast and Dakira's la papaya and la palapa. Palapa. Frivolous spending. And sea rain. Yeah, so nothing really important on here that needed to happen, but you are paying it off. Yep. Now in your checking account with available balance of 746, which I'm happy with. 747, sorry. Uh, in here, okay, these cheaper 7-Eleven trips, what are you doing? Are you filling up just a little bit of gas or are you going in no, and getting I'm j- I'm getting caffeine and snacks. What caffeine? $12.30. Because. No, I, what? Oh, wait, which one? What are you $12? spending $12.30 in caffeine? Oh, caffeine and snacks. Oh. Yes. Yeah, because what I. What are you drinking? Well, I, I need to have like minimum 200 milligrams of caffeine to start off with. So I, usually it's like those monster coffees with extra caffeine in it or um, the Celsius ones are pretty good. I like those. Okay. 7-Eleven. But I should not be doing that. So we're getting caffeine. We're getting Fritos. We're mm-hmm. Chick-fil-A caffeine. We start CBD and some brewing thing and Andy's frozen custard and some caffeine, double mm-hmm. apple smoke shop. Again, let, let's not have unhealthy habits that are also expensive habits. That's almost a hundred bucks. What are you smoking? Oh, oh, wheat. Yeah, for sure. Okay. In what kind of form? Um, well, I mean, sometimes I'll vape it and sometimes I'll smoke it in the bong and just get it from my dealer. But I threw away my bong this morning. It's a, it's an ongoing addiction that I'm trying to get rid oh, of. Really? So. Okay, well, yes. not only the addiction thing and the financial thing, but really out of all places in our body, do we really want different kind of chemicals going into our lungs? No. Our lungs Mm-mm. of all places? Like, if we want anything to exist in us, it's like our brain, lungs, and heart. And we're just putting, we don't know what, you know, vapes. We, we, we don't know the long-term consequences of that vapor, but mm-hmm. either way. And then McDonald's and Palapa again. And then you pay $8,000 towards the car. That's fantastic. So that was the down payment you saved up, but then you just put it towards it. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ramen Tetsuya, mid-ramen in Austin. Okay. <laughs> and uh, some more CBD and caffeine and KFC and Starbucks yeah. and TJ Maxx. ATM went draw of 80 bucks. Who knows where that went? Netflix, Nomad Bar, Austin, Whataburger, and some caffeine and Popeyes and Popeyes and you transferred in $2,245 from savings. Why are we doing that? Okay, so um, the reason why is because my dad just inherited, because my grandma died, so he inherited a trust and he, wait, you want to see somebody with some crazy financial plans, you talk to that man because he does not have a bank account. Well, I don't think he does anyway and he doesn't have an ID so he can't open a bank account and so he had no way to get the money and I, I was talking to my aunt and she's trying to figure out how to get this money to him. And I was like, well, just send it to me. Like all, I was thinking I would open up another savings account and put it in there for him so that he can just ask me when he needs it. So I emptied my savings account so that she could send me all that money. I, I, I keep track of it. You know what I mean? Be like, okay, this is my dad's money mm-hmm. and this is my money. So it's, it's not like a permanent thing for it to be in my savings account right now, but that's why I moved money from my savings. Uh, and if you want to keep track of things, keep track of your to-do list. 
And at the top of that to-do list is hitting that subscribe button because we're trying to get the 750,000 subscribers. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed so far. So, okay, that $2,245 that came in, is that all that's going to come in? Um, yes, that's it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, again, $500 to the Corolla and Pineapple Express and Pineapple Express and Uber Technologies, Uber and Wendy's and IHOP and Venmo and out $210. That might have been. Usually, I use Venmo for bills too. So sometimes okay. my um, my brother will go shopping, and I'll send him because we do the shopping as a group, and we'll just pay each other for half. Okay. Um, and caffeine, and Uber, and Uber again. You have a car, but we're Ubering. All right, and Water Burger and Venmo out six hundred ten. Oh, that was when I bought my car to pick it up. Oh, okay. Well, the that's Uber, fair. yeah. And Venmo <laughs> out twenty five dollars. Venmo not a lot of money, uh, but. Uh, again, if that's for bills. Mm-hmm. So really, I didn't really. I think I saw one grocery store in here, Rosedale Market, for fifty five bucks. Did you oh, just eat out for every single? Store. Okay, uh, so where's where's the grocery shopping, or do you just eat out every single meal? So this past month has been a little bit irregular for me. Uh, I, that's why I've been going to Seven Eleven so much is because I haven't been grocery shopping um, because I just and I haven't really been eating anything. I also lost five pounds on accident. Jealous. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> um, but it, it's I just been having a hard time with my husband being gone. So that's why I'm, I'm sure. like kind of. I, not only do I spend a lot of money for like weed and stuff and like going to Seven Eleven like buying my one meal of the day there, but are you bored? Oh, no, Lonely. no, I, well, I go out with friends a lot because that's what all that lapa lapa and stuff is, is. I'm going out with my coworkers cause I'm trying not to be at home by myself. So this I'm trying home, to, man. yeah, but also like going out and drinking and eating is kind of expensive. So I need to stop doing that. But, um, well, yeah, no, I've just, that's why I haven't been grocery shopping. All the BS spending was just over a thousand bucks, which isn't crazy but it sounds is sounds like a lot to me well it is a lot for your income for bs spending it's a third of your income yeah so that's kind of a lot if a but then again if that's all the fun you're having and you're not in a bad situation then if that's the 30 percent that you want to put towards having fun okay but i would rather get you out of your car debt now mm-hmm. first and then last but not least but there is a savings account What's the current balance in there? Because I know things have changed. What's in your savings right now? I believe it's like $22,500. All right. I think we have found... uh, But that's my dad's money. That's not my money. Well, what's your money? Oh, my savings? Yeah. Oh, I haven't really allocated a a set amount for savings because um, I've just been kind of doing whatever with my money. What's your savings? What do you have? Like in my checking account right now? No, that's all my money in my checking account. <laughs> you don't have anything else outside of that? Mm-mm. No. Where'd the $8,000 come from? $8,000? Well, I had it already. That's what you saved up. Yeah. So right now, but the $700. Half of it my it, husband gave me. So right now, the $700 in your checking account is all that you have towards your name. Mm-hmm. Why'd you send the savings? That's your dad's. It's not even yours. Like, what? What are we doing? What do you mean? You sent the savings that showed twenty five, twenty three thousand dollars. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. That that's just in my savings account. That's but what it's I not it yours. Yeah, no, it's not mine. So your dad's money's in your savings account. Yeah, because he doesn't have a bank account. Oh my goodness, this is weird. I know. <laughs> How old is this dude? Um. Well, he's like fifty six or something like that. What, is he like a weirdo? That yeah, he's a weirdo. He's a weirdo for sure. Yeah. All right, so, well, now I'm a little less happy. I was like, all right, we're going to pay off the car today, and we're going to have pretty much a fully funded emergency oh, phone, no. and that was it. So, but, nope. Sorry to burst your bubble. Or bubble, my bubble bursted. <laughs> Spending a third on fun while we have all that. I'm glad you saved up $8,000 to begin with. I'm, I am glad you put a good down payment down on a car. We can, it, you know, I mean, it kind of was, but you didn't do it the traditional route. But either way. Right. Your portion of rent. $610. Incredible for Austin, but that's with the roommates and stuff. We got a backyard. Oh, it's a house. Yeah, it's a duplex. I got three dogs, so I need a backyard. Oh, very good. Very good. I have a puppy too, but he's in my bedroom. So he didn't jump all over you when you came in. Oh, that's okay. (laughs) Okay. And uh, your portion of utilities? Um, so, uh, me and my brother are splitting it in half since my husband's not there, so he's not paying any of it. And usually it's, uh, around this time, it's like between 150 and like 180. Your portion? Oh, so my 
portion would so be a third of that? about like uh, 75 to you. So you pay half. Yeah. Okay. So maybe 80 bucks, I guess. What's your car insurance? Um, my car insurance. Well, it freaking was 140, and then they canceled it because they didn't have. I don't know. It was weird. Like I put, I had to get the insurance before I took the car home, right? Because the dealer wouldn't let me take the car home. And so I got it, and then they sent me a letter in the mail saying, like, oh, like we don't have your name on the title. And I was like, what are you talking about? I just bought it. But I guess it's because when I started the insurance, like I wasn't on the title yet or something like that. I'm not sure. But anyways, I just restarted it yesterday, and I was playing phone tag with them because they kept me around and not doing anything. And How then much it is it? Went up to like. 200 something maybe like 250 or something i can't exactly remember How so much you i'm spend gonna on gas a month um maybe like like 60 or 70 dollars i don't have to 70, fill up very much yeah. yeah though it is a very driving independent like you need to drive in order to live in austin mm-hmm. unless you're directly downtown or in the domain okay so Healthcare is that through work? Um, I have my husband's health insurance, oh, so I don't pay anything. Sick. Other minimum monthly expenses. Oh um, well, we have oh, the car payment. It was two eighty. I forgot my so my gas bill is separate from my utility bill. That's oh, usually so you didn't like, include that? No, yeah, sorry, I forgot. That's it's okay. usually like twenty dollars maybe for my portion. Okay, I'm gonna give you. Grocery spending, of which is what you're going to be doing now, is getting groceries. Like a big girl of $300. <laughs> and then I'm giving you toll paper, anything else you need for the house, makeup, all that good stuff, $100. Do you think 300 fancy, for groceries is enough for one and a half people? Because you have a kid. No, it's my younger sibling, but me and my brother, we, we just split the groceries in half. How old is so your younger sibling? Like 16. Is he, is he the brother that you're talking about that splits the payments? No, no, no. So I, you have I have my one older brother. Living. Yeah, and then my younger sister. Younger sister is who you're taking care of. Yeah. Okay. And you and your older brother uh, both take part in this. Kind of, sorta. Yeah, taking care of them. I'm the younger sibling. I'm, I don't really do anything except for get groceries and stuff. But and he is the you? main. Yeah. Okay. What's the situation there? Why is he living with you guys? Well. As we've established, my dad is weirdo. So um, my sister can't. Oh no, she's crazy. They're all crazy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. I'm gonna allocate just an additional uh, since someone else is also helping to put into it. I'm gonna have you put in it. It's it's only groceries and other little things that you're helping with. Are you helping with more stuff too, like school supplies and like what are we? What does it look like? No, just 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 food? food. Yeah. I mean, I'll do the odd thing here and there, but um, I mean, I don't think it's really anything usually expensive. Okay. Like I'll get them pants sometimes, but then I'm gonna put on a monthly basis an additional 250 bucks that you can put towards that. A little more than I was gonna go, but that's just in case there's pants and shoes and stuff like that. So let's try to have that less. This is yeah. you put towards the brother fund, your right. portion. Okay. And then, uh, you know, whatever else comes from the other side is awesome, too. Okay. I put it that as a max of 250 Make it a little yeah. lower when you can, but then when those odd things pop up that you should help with. Right. Um, you said 16 as well? Um, yeah. Okay. He can also start, you know, working on some Mickey D's if he wants to bring in some extra money. Right. Does exactly. he have a car? Um, no, it's my younger sister. Um, oh, she. I, yeah. Sorry. No, keep, she, she does she not have, have a, car? a car. No, she has a bike that's like electric and stuff. So she gets around that way? Yeah. And you're pretty close to things? Um. Yeah, I would, I would say so. Okay, then it, she can start getting a job. As long as it does not detract from school and does not put her in like a bad mental health place with the balance between school yeah. and uh, stuff. But yeah. she can also help. Okay. I just want to frame this right. She does not necessarily need to be fully self sufficient right now, mm-hmm. but she can she can start gaining some of the skills and contributing. Yeah, but Ed, she's probably not going to because um, she's going into a self paced school right now, so she's trying to graduate a year early. So the kind of the plan was like Would just focus on school. Um, well, probably at the beginning of next year. Yeah, but by that time, I may be in San Diego, so it's kind of irrelevant to sure. me. Okay. 
just one thing to consider going out there. I'm way on the outside of this conversation, so I don't want to make any immediate adjustments. Right. Just make sure as we're heading into the next year and heading towards 18, skills are good to learn. We do not right. want to be enabling anything. Of course not. Any leaning on people. Well, actually, leaning on family is good in a healthy way. I just want to make not sure. Not excessively, yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, through a weird family situation that is currently there with parents that are not in the picture, I want to make sure she is fully successful when she hits that adult age in mm-hmm. our culture to go out and make a path of her own without having to rely on others. Right. right. Leaning healthily on Health, health in a healthy way on family and friends, totally good. Nothing wrong with mm-hmm. that. But just making sure that she's fully set up. Any other minimum monthly payments you can think of? Um. Oh. Um. You know, you should probably put on there. I have to pay. Let's see. Well, I buy a lot of dog food, so it probably comes out to like uh, one twenty a month, maybe. I have big dogs. Typically, the way I do that is I put that in your own groceries. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I'm changing your food okay. budget to four hundred. Okay, that that works. I just get the H E B brand, so it's not too expensive. Okay, and you're canceling all your other subscriptions because you do not need them right now, like Netflix oh, and all that uh, shit. Of course, of course. I don't really watch Netflix anyway, so I guess I don't need it. Who does at this point? <laughs> okay, so your needs category comes out to $2,060. And after your raise, not taking into account much overtime, well, a little bit of overtime, but not much. Uh, after your raise, your needs category is 62% of your income. So that's, that's a too lot, much. Huh? Yeah. That's too much. Um, that's with also helping your younger sister, but even still take that away and you're still well above 50%. 50% should be the maximum that goes towards your needs. 50%. So what we need to do here is, you know, when you're moving to San Diego, which is, I'm going to say, well, I mean, the income situation will change then too, because you'll need another job. So it just gets weird. Essentially what needs to happen right now is needs are cut somehow. Where do we make wiggle room in the needs? I don't know. I don't want you to you know, starve yourself. I don't want you to not give your little sister what she needs. I don't want, you can't break leases or anything. So, well, actually we can break a lease because there's a clause in leases for people yeah, in the military. Do you want to? And is your brother going, Oh, well, he, we already talked about it and he said he was fine to just stay at, to, Wait, it sounds like a bad move? decision when to me, but move? it's hard to tell right now because like everything the military tells us the next day turns out to be a lie. So don't ever trust the military, but uh, he's supposed to get, he's going to, my husband's going to graduate in August. And then at that point he should be able to take maybe three weeks of leave. And then we were going to spend that time to move, oh, but we have to quick. get on a wait list for the housing. <sighs> so we're not even sure if we can move by that point, we may have to wait longer. So everything's kind of kind of cluster right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to make plans. It is. But I'm not going to screw myself and go to San Diego without a job or anything because, no. I mean, I have a good job here that I like, so. Well, your needs are obviously too expensive, but you do have $1,240 left over on a monthly basis with some overtime that's in there. Mm-hmm. So we can start making progress towards things and we can have an emergency fund and stuff like that. But yeah. is there, well, yeah, celebrate, but is there, but the amount of time that's necessary in order to get that is well beyond the, when you would move, even if it's delayed a bit. Right. So it's like, okay. how much of a plan is going to be a plan right now? So should I just work some, a bunch of overtime? Well, absolutely. Do you have the option to? Work oh, as yeah, much as totally. you want. Yeah, I can right. work as well, much as I want. You work a bunch. <laughs> work a bunch. Go okay. crazy. Stretch that to four thousand, four thousand five hundred dollars that's coming in net. Monthly? Net, yeah. Okay. Go okay. crazy. Because you're working what, forty five hours right now? Or something like that? Forty four hours? Usually 42? yeah, around there. Okay. Somewhere. Work 55, 60. 55, 60. five, sixty. Fifty five, sixty. Go crazy. Go crazy. Because you're moving. Let's get you in Might a as cl- well, right? let's get you in a clean spot. It doesn't matter right now. You're looking for distractions anyway at this point yeah. because you miss your husband and you're going and spending money right now. Let's use that time and just be making the money right now. Okay. So, 
You're do what yeah. because the cool thing is if you have an extra net two thousand dollars a month, I mean, just for the sake of moving and the expenses around it, you know, for two and a half months, save up five thousand dollars, which is two and a half months of emergency fund for you right now. But that covers some of the moving expenses when that needs to happen. You know, putting down security deposits and stuff like that. Well, never mind. Right. Right. It's a it's a yeah because we don't really have to do pace. the military will pay to move all of our stuff. Okay, maybe we. Um, Save up four thousand dollars for a little extra safety net than we would normally have in this situation, but but then everything after that four thousand dollars for these coming months, you're just putting it towards the car, putting it towards the car, trying to get the car balance. You know, after a few months, maybe down to six thousand, eight thousand dollars because you're just going crazy. But that's if you're here going crazy for like 6 months. I don't know if we're going to be here going crazy for a total of 6 months from now. I don't know cuz August that's coming up in a couple months. Yeah. And then you're yeah. thinking of moving like what after that. So I I I don't know. A lot of this depends on that and then what the income situation living and then living expenses look like there. Obviously, the military is taking care of a lot of it, but you know, cost of things are also higher as you mentioned with gas there. Mm-hmm. But rents in living, shelter overhead is usually someone's biggest monthly expense anyway. And that's not something you're going to have to worry about. So, you should really work like crazy when you're there. Just go wild in whatever position you're in. Even if you're making a little less money, you know, hopefully your needs category will be less. It should be maxed out at 50% anyway, but it shouldn't even be getting close to 50% with the situation you're in at that point. Mm-hmm. And everything else should be getting this car paid off. Because then you're going to have your car fully owned, owing nothing, which will be very fun, very good. And then how much do you have in your 401k right now? I believe it's like $600. Like okay. I had just started. The exciting part is you're 22, and usually I get on people here who are in their 30s and stuff like, oh, you missed your best decade of compound growth. I mean, by the time you're out of the car, and t- uh, ah, the income, I don't know what your income will be. It's so hard, but your expenses will be less. What I want to see is a fully funded emergency fund, which is six months of living expenses, minimum $10,000 just in case a car breaks or something like that or a medical thing happens. Minimum $10,000 and the car paid off by the time you're, you, it was just your birthday, right? Mm-hmm. So you're like 33 and a half. I want to see that. So a year and a half from now, I want to see the car gone on a fully funded emergency fund. And I don't see why you shouldn't be able to do that. Especially if before you leave to move, just go insane. Go insane and work 60 hours a week. Okay. 70 hours a week. I don't care. Right. Go wild. Just work, work, work. And only follow mean, the budget that I gave you. You do mean next year, right? Not when I'm 33 because I'm 22 right now. I'm just 23 like, and a half. 23 and okay, a half. Okay, just... <laughs> yeah. Just make sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell this story to you, but yeah, 23 and a half. So, um, which is great because then what I'm going to have you do is at a minimum maxing out your Roth IRA every year. And you maxing out your Roth IRA every year from where you're starting with compound growth to the time you retire, dude, you're going to be a millionaire. You're okay. just straight up going to be a millionaire unless you're investing it in some stupid stuff. We're not going to talk about that because I... Do not have the legal qualifications to give you investment advice. Okay, oh, that's fine. I do have a question about the four hundred one k stuff. Okay. Um, so, ooh. okay, no, I just lost my question. I'll think of it later. Okay, but either way, if you're just investing in the general stock market, which is not advice, which returns eight percent a year on average since the you know historical inception of it to now. You're going to be a millionaire if you're maxing out your Roth IRA every year and doing that. Not a suggestion, but if you do it. So, okay. Like, that's exciting. And then there's oh, going to be. Oh, I remembered my question. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, if I move jobs because your 401k is like with your job, does that mean you have to like. You're going to roll move it over. It? Yeah. You're going to roll it over into something like Fidelity. That's where I rolled mine over from my previous employer. Oh. And yeah. then you just keep it there? Yeah, you can keep it in Fidelity or wherever you've rolled it over to, and you can roll it over again if you end up wanting to. But okay, uh, all right, all yeah, right. it's roll actually it's actually really simple. And usually okay, those good. platforms. I was like, oh, well, the platforms that you're rolling it over to, I again, I only have experience with Fidelity in that instance, but they just gave me instructions, and it was super easy. Okay, good. That's why I haven't started 401k yet because I was like, kind of, I've had a lot of jobs, so I skip around jobs a lot. Well, that's my history. Well, I see anyway. you're actually with ADP with the payroll, and if they have their uh, 401k through there as well. That's yeah. where I transferred mine through and it wasn't that difficult. So, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. No, it'll yeah. be pretty chill. 
Okay. In general, your financial situation isn't that complicated. What's a little weird here is the unknowns. I don't know how long you're going to be here. I don't know how much overtime you're actually going to do. I would just go crazy and see if you do. If you don't, I mean, the situation drags out to like three years. And I don't know in terms of paying off the car, have a fully funded emergency fund. And I don't know what your income situation is going to look like when you move anyway. And what living expenses are going to look like either and just what you do. So a lot of it's dependent on what you choose to do. What I would lay out as a path, though, is take whatever path gets you to a couple months of emergency fund now because the move is going to create some unknown expenses you never know. Right. So a couple months emergency fund and then paying off the car as quick as you can and then saving up a six month emergency fund, $10,000 minimum in case of medical expenses or like the car breaking down or whatever. Okay, ten thousand dollars. Because when it rains, it pours. So right, right, right. So from there, and then do I just keep that ten thousand dollars like in my regular savings? Yeah, account? put it in a high yield like uh, SoFi's. That's where I keep mine. Link in the description below at four point three percent interest rate. And there's actually bonuses okay. when you set up direct deposit like two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah, which is something you could do actually. Do they uh, do like a exciting. um a credit check when you apply for that no. or anything? Because I could no, do one with my debt. credit card. Yeah. Uh, my credit card, the bank, it says I can have a high yield savings account. Oh, probably. Account. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, but it's probably sh- Well, uh, unless it's not. I think it was like 4.6%, but. Maybe. I, mean, I know not, Capital I One has remember. a good one currently, but I do. Yeah. Do you have to pay monthly for that savings account? No, dude, they're no? paying you. They want you to have your money. Oh, there. okay, cool. Yeah, they're giving you uh, like four, again, with the one I use, 4.3%. Okay. On oh, an annual basis. I will is, do that then. Yeah, so that's something uh, worth considering. Then, yes, this is sitting there, and then you're maxing out your Roth IRA. And then trying to get as close to with your income situation is going to be hard, but who knows what it's going to look like. But as close as you can get to maxing out your 401k. Mm -hmm. 20% minimum of your income should be going towards investing in savings of some kind. Okay. At the once the car is paid off. Once the car is paid off. Fifty percent for needs, thirty percent for wants, twenty percent for savings. I'd rather you do twenty five percent for savings and twenty five percent for wants and fifty percent on needs, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Do you think I should open a high yield savings account for my dad's trust fund too? Sure. If you're for some reason managing it, which you should get some legal paperwork explaining the situation around there, by the way. I should. Yes. Oh gosh, I don't want to do that. Well, it's just <laughs> It's weird. I know. It is weird. Plus, he gave it to you to put in there. And it's yeah. like legally, like he gifted it to you. So maybe there's taxes around. It's a weird situation. Oh, you're right. Maybe yeah. I should just take it all out and give it to him. I That's the. Just keep, get it out of my. That's the safer way for you. Okay, that's what I'll do. I don't want to get in legal trouble. No, let him be a big boy and figure out his own life. You're Here right. We- you're right. Come on. Yeah. So that's all what I do. What are you actually going to do knowing yourself? Um, okay. So in terms of overtime, I, uh, my, the length of my shifts, I can't really like work always like 10 hours if I want to. It just kind of oh, okay. depends on like how long the blood drive is. Well, um, you made it sound like you could work as much as you want. Well, you know, I can pick up as much as I want. Good. Um, but I mean, should I work seven days a week? Like, Sure, I don't care. Take advantage of the time now when you have nothing else going on to just pay off the debt and get yeah. close towards your goals. At some point, you'll have things going on in life, stuff with your husband and everything that you'll want to dedicate more time aside. Yeah. Okay. When you have kids, you mentioned that as well. Okay. Take the opportunity of the time where there's nothing, there's no other obligations right. to just pay off this debt and save up as much as you can. So yes, go crazy. Okay. I think I could probably pick up. I definitely think I could easily pick up one extra full shift. Maybe my seventh work day could be like, cause you could, I could do like a half shift. That okay. way I could sure. still clean my house. It Six takes and a, half a days. long time to Sounds clean my great. house. Okay. Yeah. I think I can do that pretty good. Yeah. Um, you're saving and then with you're saving up the two months paying off the debt and saving up ten thousand hours or more depending on your six months of living expenses right yeah so with paying off my car and saving up for an emergency fund um should i just should i just pay off all of the car first and then have save it for the emergency fund or do both again we're doing two months of them 
two months of monthly expenses saved up on the side and then paying everything towards the car and then saving up the six month emergency fund minimum ten thousand dollars you're doing that just because what we've seen even if people following like dave ramsey's plan where it's a thousand dollars on the side we've had multiple people on the show of the following that guidance and then because an emergency pops up and one thousand dollars isn't even close to enough of dealing with real emergencies in 2023 they end up in a worse situation than wh- when they than where they were before starting his baby oh. steps so i'm just saying make sure you can cover at least a month and i'm giving you two months because who knows what's going to pop up with uh the moving expenses right sorry oh i forgot to tell you my phone bill it's 15 dollars a month <laughs> okay yeah it doesn't really change much but that's <laughs> good that's really cheap that's really cool i only pay it once a once a year anything else no, I don't. I don't think so. But can I write this down so I can remember it? We'll talk about that. Okay. And then, uh, yes. Well, I'll give you all that, and okay, then you can cool, also watch right. the video as well. But uh, oh yeah, that's true, right? But okay. while we're here and recording this mm-hmm. for the masses, um, I think you can be in an okay place. Just sacrifice now, and then figure out the yeah. income moving situation. Follow the steps that I laid out, and you'll be a millionaire by the time you retire. Okay. It's exciting. Right. Don't f- it up. I will not mess it up. Year and, and I, a half. What? I don't want to be a phlebotomist forever either, so I'm not going to be making this on income for the rest of my life. Hey, anyways. do this go crazy. A year, a year and a half, we should have a follow up, and you should have a fully funded emergency fund and a car that's completely paid off. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. For Roy, actually, her hammer financial score is going to be a little lower right now because of a few specific things in the categories, and you'll see, but I think it's going to get up pretty quickly. So breaking it down, her hammer financial score, spending within a budget. I mean, come on, spending a third of your income on BS when we have no emergency fund and when we have that kind of car debt. It's going to be a zero. For the debt, though, it's not the worst debt by any means. It's not a super high interest rate, but it is a car, so it's going to have to be a three out of 10. Retirement, okay, for her age, you know, I'm glad it started, but there's still pretty much nothing right now. We just need to get that up. But, you know, 22, can't blame her too much, but the overall Hammer financial score is not age-based. It's trying to get to that 10 out of 10 as you go through the ages. Right now, it's going to be a one out of 10 emergency fund. There's nothing she drained it, put it towards the car, which I appreciate, but there needs to be a little cushion still. Zero out of 10 real estate, nothing. But they're talking about that zero out of 10. Right now, Hammer Financial Score, one out of 10. Check out the resources that I linked in the description below. They're the ones that I use or would use in specific circumstances, like a very high yield savings account that I personally use or getting a free $5 when you put $5 into Acorns and other things like education and stuff like that. So check them out and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks. Refinancing your student loans can help you take care of your finances. So take the next step towards financial freedom and visit sofi.com forward slash Caleb. Find out if the rates are competitive for you by going to the link in the description below.